Welcome back to another video. My viewers and my subscribers, I trust that you're keeping yourself safe and you're keeping yourself healthy. Now, in today's episode, I am going to be continuing with my foundation engineering series. And today, I'm going to be looking at the different types of foundation. Now, there are several different types of foundation. As I've said to you before in my last video, that foundation is basically categorized in two categories. There are deep foundation and there are shallow foundation. Now, there are several different types of foundation. There are strip foundation, otherwise known as continuous footing, otherwise known as your wall footing. Now, there are pad foundation, and pad foundation is usually used in a frame structure. And I'm going to be giving you an example of what a frame structure is. There are two types of structures. There are load-bearing structures and there are frame structures. So I'm going to be shedding a little bit more light on that further on in the video. Now, there are also deep foundation, which is known as pile foundation, which is your H-pile or your caisson or your drill shaft. And there are also rough foundation, which is used on very, very weak soil. So I'm going to begin the presentation by looking firstly at our strip foundation, otherwise known as your continuous footing or your wall footing. Now, a strip foundation generally looks like this. It is a continuous footing with a vertical wall erecting upwards. And notice it is cantilevered. It is cantilevered on both sides. Now, a strip foundation is used in the typical load-bearing structure. That is your residential building and some commercial building as well as light to medium weight structures. And it is also used on soil that has a good or strong bearing capacity. Now let me turn to the pad foundation and tell you what a pad foundation is. Now a pad foundation, otherwise known as your spread footing, in our system in Jamaica, we refer to it as a pad foundation, but in the United States here, it is re referred to as the spread footing. It means the same thing. Now, a pad footing looks something like this. It is still cantilevered on both sides, and it is generally used in a frame structure. Now, the pad footing or spread footing is used in a frame building, as I've mentioned to you earlier, and it distributes the loads in both directions. So you can basically call it a two-way slab. And it is used on soil of good bearing capacity. Now, it is also used to support concentrated load. And what concentrated load mean? It means a load that is going to bear on the structure for a long period of time. It is concentrated. So that pretty much takes care of your pad footing and your strip foundation. So let me show you what a frame structure is because I know that the typical building that we build in Jamaica, the type of construction that we are used to, is a strip footing and most people are familiar with that. So a, a frame structure is a series of columns and beams. So in plan, you might have it look like this. So this is your building in plan. This is the plan view. Plan view. 
and you have a column here, a column here, a column here, column, column, column. So in these, then you have your beams. Column. So in section, if you should cut the section and look at the section of this column, you will see something like this. Now in section, it will look something like this. Then you have your beams, and then you have your beams. So that is what a typical frame structure looks like in section and in plan. It is a series of column and beams. And usually these type of footing, spread footing, are used in industrial or commercial building where you have heavy loads. For example, a library. If you're going to be designing a library, you will want to use a, C a, a frame structure because it can carry heavy loads and what, how that load part function. The floor loads transfer the load to the column. The floor load is transferred the load to the beam and the beam transferred to the, uh, the column and the column transferred to the footing and the footing spread that load evenly and uniformly across the soil with minimum stress. The principle of a raft or mat foundation, and by the way, a raft foundation is the term that we use back in our system, and a mat foundation is what is used in the American system. Now the raft foundation or the mat foundation looks something like this in section so i'll give you a 2d view of what a raft foundation looks like now the raft foundation it is used on soils that are very weak and it is used to spread the building load over a large area so if you're building in an area that you have peats weak material or quicksand the geotechnical engineer will more than likely instruct you to use a raft foundation to spread the load over a wide area now the spreading of the load now from the formula we know that stress is equal to force over area so it is the stress sigma which is equal to the load over area now i am going to show you in a little calculation the principle of raft foundation how it is used to spread the load so let's say for example you have a building that is that is a thousand pounds heavy right the building weighs a thousand pounds and it is spreading over area of 20 feet square, 20 square feet. Now, if you should calculate the stress here, this will give you, this will give you a stress of 50 pounds per square feet, right? So a building which weighs a thousand pounds spreading over an area of 20 square feet will give you a stress of 50 pounds per square feet or feet square now the principle is this so the building load is going to remain constant of a thousand pounds but if you increase the the area of the footing to 
20 feet to 40 feet. You move this 20 to 40 feet, you increase it by 20, or you double this, the square feet of the footing, you will end up with less stress. So this 20 feet now will be 40 feet, 40 square feet. And if you should do that, you will work out to be 25 pound per feet square. So the principle of raft foundation, as I said to you before, is spreading the load over a wider area. So you can see when the area was 20 square feet, this and the building weighs a thousand pounds, the stress on that soil is going to be 50 pounds per square feet. And you can see that the same building load maintains, remain constant, and we increase the square area from 20 feet to 40 feet, and we end up with 25 pounds per square feet. So we get less stress. So the principle is that when you spread the load, the, when you spread the area, the stress reduces if the weight or the load of the structure remain constant. So you spread the load over a wide area and you end up with less stress on your foundation soil. Now, let me move to deep foundation. And deep foundation is usually what we refer to as pile foundation. Now, as it stands, there are two types of pile foundation. There are end bearing piles and there are friction bearing piles. And you can also install your piles either as a group of piles or a single pile. Now, for a end bearing pile, it is usually a H pile that is driven approximately a hundred feet. It can be it can be less than a hundred feet. It can be more than a hundred feet. It can be several hundred feet, depending on where the bearing capacity is that can carry the weight of that building. So that is when you're dealing with very, very weak soil and you have to go down hundreds of feet to get soil that is good or rock that is good to carry the weight of the structure. Now, in end bearing pile, the pile is driven to what is called bedrock, several, several tens of feet down. And you have to drill the pile down at least three feet into the rock. So the minimum depth inside the rock is three feet. It can be more, but not less. And you still have to take samples of this rock to test for the bearing strength of that rock. In other words, when you, when you do your test, when you drill your soil and you go down to that bedrock, you cannot say, yes, that rock is strong enough to carry the load. You have to take up samples of this rock, carry it to the lab, to the lab do your various analysis checks, and test the bearing capacity of this rock before you anchor your footing, your, your, your pile on that rock. And end bearing pile also can be rake or battered. In other words, it is, it is slanted. It is not ver it didn't drive it vertically down, it can be driven at an angle to get more or extra bearing capacity. Now, we are going to be talking about drill shaft or caisson. Now, the purpose of a drill shaft, a drill shaft is, is really a friction bearing pile. In other words, the pile gets its bearing strength from the friction of the pile itself against the soil it is going down into. So how that works is that you, you dig up the hole, you excavate, you use an ogre, and you excavate down the hole to several different, to several different layers till you reach a bearing strata that you can anchor your building. Now, to, to, to get the bearing strength of the drill shaft, the drill shaft 
is calculated by the sharp friction on your tip resistance. So is a measure of your sharp friction, which is the frictional force. Because this is a load, this is a load coming down here, and this is a frictional force going against that load. So you I'm going to be doing some calculation to demonstrate how you calculate your sharp friction and your tip resistance. Now the pile when you excavate the the the, the, the hole into the ground to the required depth given to you by the geotechnical engineer, what you do you lower the rebar caging you lower the rebar the rebar caging into the into the hole like this the rebar caging is lowered into the into the hole like this and then you pour your concrete so a drill shaft or a cation is a in situ type of footing or case or deep foundation mean pour on site the when you see the term in situ it means your concrete is poured on site now the drill shaft as it's done it can be installed in either groups or as a single single structure depending what you are supporting the foundation selection for your structure or your building is done in consultation with a geotechnical engineer and factors to be considered by the geotechnical engineer are the soil strength meaning the bearing capacity of the soil whether the soil is strong enough to carry the load of the building the soil type whether the soil is clay or whether the soil is sand or a mixture of both the variability of, of, of soil type over the area and with increase in depth. So if you have seen a bore study, a geotechnical report, when you look at the different levels, depending on the depth of that excavation for the, for the pile, you are going to go through different, different layers of soil. So that is what is meant by the variability of soil. You're going to hit you various different soil layers as you go down the susceptibility of soil where the soil is unstable when it is exposed to water and i'm going to be doing some calculation to show you how you you calculate your your vertical effective stress and you remove the hydraulic pressure the water pressure from the soil to get the real pressure at that level the real bearing capacity of that level so stay in tune for that video and the deflection of the building so that pretty much is what the foundation engineering as it relates to different type of foundation and what the geotechnical engineer does in choosing a particular foundation system for that particular soil that can carry the load of your structure so that is it for this video i thank you for watching the video i hope you have watched the video until the end if you're watching my channel for the first time remember to subscribe to my regular viewers and subscribers you know what to do already and i will see you in another video upload Take care of yourself and walk good. Thank you.